for the skeletons. Yeah, what if I meant to sell my soul? Laughing back at the kitties who dish me for the kids who hit me chasing hundreds and fifties, wishing they hit me. Awesome. Bienvenue au Lent Review Day 5 W. Je me parle ici cette heure et aujourd'hui nous parlons à Moses Jones, artiste de Montréal, qui est complètement magnifique. So, how are you doing today, Moses? I'm doing great, brother. How about you? I'm doing really good. Doing really good. So, uh, just to kind of get fill you guys in on who Moses is, Moses Jones is an artist straight out of Montreal that I got fed through an Instagram ad about a few days ago, and I was just got so hyped on. The ad in the music video that he sent that was published and like advertised there that I instantly DM'd them was like, dude, I gotta have you on the show. Your shit is too cool. Uh, I want to sit down and have a chat. He's got like a super funky style that I could only really describe as like Brock Hampton meets like Masego, if you know who that is. And uh, I do. Yep. I just like a really interesting combination that I haven't stumbled across before. So I just really wanted to sit down and hear uh, the thought process behind everything. He's got five songs on Spotify, that's it, but uh, that's more than enough to like really dig into this guy's and like he's got a lot more on SoundCloud if you find it. And other than that, he just <laughs> dropped an awesome music video for his most recent single, Apple Pie, which is a really different music video, even as far as music videos go. It, I've watched it probably several times at this point and there's always like little things that I pick up and it just, it always leaves me thinking like trying to figure out what else is supposed to be going on. Uh, Really interesting work. Uh, anything you got to say, Moses? No, that's uh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm honored to be called the combination of Brockhampton and Masego. <laughs> Those are definitely <laughs> big ex inspirations, obviously. The jazz influence, Masego is incredible. Alongside Brockhampton and their experimental essence is like, this is, this is the type of music that people just talk about forever, you know? Yeah, it's dope to hear that like other people know who Masego is because I've dropped that name so many times and I always it always just falls on deaf ears and I'm like, oh, why is everyone sleeping on Masego? <laughs> Yo, I went to the um, FKJ show and I was praying that Masego was gonna make an appearance for Tado. Yeah, like I was the virtual, <laughs> <laughs> the virtual representative, but it's okay. That's actually where I met Kay Trinata. Damn. Yeah, it was really cool. Really Amazing cool. show. Tight. So we're just going to fly into our first question, the five W's, which is our who. And I wanted to start with this question to kind of just give everyone a great kind of understanding of who you are, where you're at, and kind of the world that you kind of exist in. So for our who, which is who are the kids from the underground? Kids from the underground. It's a great question. Now, a lot of people get the idea of kids from the underground mixed up in a lot of ways because we don't necessarily have it or we haven't really vocalized it online of exactly like who we are and like what the purpose is when we go out and we'll perform and do shows as the whole group in the collective people just label us as being a band you know what i mean because <laughs> you're playing with each other in a group in this setting right yeah which I'm sh sure you can you can label it as that in that moment, you know what I mean? But I'll do my own shows, Fernie will do his own shows, Cedric will do his own shows, etc. So when we come together and we, we when we first started Kids from the Underground, the whole purpose of it was kind of to just bring bring each other up to the next level, you know what I mean? Out from the underground, being able to work with each other and you know uplift our talents by like fusing them together right so in a in a way we're kind of working as a label right now mm -hmm. but the whole idea of kids from the underground like the concept more relies on bringing a community together and like connecting with a tribe and pushing each other up you know because it's a lot easier to make a make make music with people or or, you know, know that you always have somebody to back you up with your vision or to, to push you and challenge you on something. Maybe it's not good. Maybe, oh, this could change this. Oh, maybe you can help me with this part. And it's, 
it's good because it takes away the pride of things you know what i mean because mm -hmm. music is meant to connect people at the end of the day is it like really just strictly a music kind of like based art collective or do you have like other is it like a multimedia thing do you got like video and photo people in there as well so in the forefront of things it is like a music thing where we're we're, we're obviously pushing the artists and like publishing the artists so so on and so forth um but people who are in our surroundings who do different sorts of media it's like if you ask them will, or ask us they'll say like yeah i'm part of kids from the underground you know what i mean yeah, whether yeah. it's our videographer kai who did the apple pie or our graphic design friend jason it's like they're all kids from the underground yeah. one way or another because they're supporting the vision and they're supporting like what it's what it means to be a kid from the underground you know nice that's, it's, yeah, I feel like art collectives like that are something that, that find, like, they're weirdly challenging to get started and maintain. Like, they're, like, they're not an easy thing to come across. A pretty special kind of I, I, world. I would definitely agree on that. <laughs> I'm lucky that this is the only one I've been in and it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, if anyone is interested in learning more about the Kids from the Underground, I'll leave a link to a playlist of all their music and kind of like their collective kind of like unit playlist. Uh, that'll be down in the description for anyone that wants to check out the other artists that are in the group. But we're just going to fly into our second question, the five W's, which is our what. And uh, through kind of like exploring your musical discography and kind of like your Instagram and all like your socials, I found like you bring music from a lot of places back to like you, you go a lot, of, a lot of places with music to bring it back to what you create. So I was thinking, what are like your three biggest artistic inspirations, different genres? Like Different genres. This is in terms of music, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I left it up as just like artistic inspirations, because I feel like, I mean, I know, like, I'm a videographer, but I, I pull inspiration from, like, artistically from things that aren't videographers, so... And like thinking where, where do you pull like in artistic inspiration for your projects from? I think a lot. I mean, in terms of music, in terms of music, I would say big three mu musicians that like have always inspired me throughout. Throughout is obviously someone like Kendrick Lamar, somebody like Smino, who's just like pushing the boundaries, and someone like J Cole. Those are obviously like that they're kind of like the gatekeepers yeah. but there there's a reason why they're the gatekeepers i think i get those inspirations in terms of like how i like to approach the way i think about about writing and and mm -hmm. rapping and, and so on and so forth to really like be able to mm -hmm. write with substance you know what i mean but also on top of that I'm, I get a lot of inspiration from just reading and I have, I've, I've, I, I read so so many books all the time. A lot of it is driven on philosophy, um, or music books. Yeah. I actually have this book right here. This is a really good book. <laughs> this is your brain on music. It was actually a, um, professor, uh, who study at McGill for neuroscience and he used to be in a band he used to do music and he talks about how his journey from like playing music and understanding it in this way and feeling way to to actually learning how it affects your brain and how and why it affects your brain and why like certain melodies stick to your brain and so on and so forth yeah. so that's yeah. like even though that's more on the science side, I still feel like that is is very artistic in a way. You know mm, what I mean? 100%. Because you're learning about why the art is considered art. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think also some of these artistic... The third one, I would say, is probably just my family. Everybody in my family is an artist. My My brother is a painter, and he does... Uh, well, all all forms of like visual arts, you know what I mean? Whether it's like sculpting or painting um, or digital art, graphic design, like he does it all. And then there's someone like my sister and she's a fashion designer. So you, you, you realize that 
fashion is so incorporated with music and music is so incorporated with fashion as well. Um, my, my dad was a musician right there and uh, my mother was a, was a writer. So <laughs> I don't think I had a choice, but to be influenced, you know, <laughs> yeah, you kind of like got it, got it from all sides. There's like, you can, there's, it's everywhere. Wow. That's, that's like a full, like, and everyone's like, that just sounds like as someone that's like super deep in the arts, but like, doesn't really have family that's in the arts. That's just, it's like a really kind of like interesting thought to just have like everyone in your world just be so invested in that. So yeah, what, it's, it's like healthy pressure. <laughs> yeah, what was that like growing up around all that stuff? Like, with all that art, like, since such a young age? Well, I'm the youngest, so it's interesting because you kind of watch, I watched my siblings kind of develop their, 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 I guess, avenue into their art form, you know what I mean? And even right now, I don't think they would consider themselves, like, established like neither would I, right? But it's like it's it's super interesting to. I guess growing up it was different though because there there, I mean, for my sister, she was still in the process of studying for for fashion, right? Yeah. When I was younger, and uh, she's a lot older than me. She's eight years older than me. So I saw I saw her be able to like go to school. She would come home with her textiles. She would show me her drawings and stuff like that for different clothing. But she's been doing that since she was a kid. Um, for my, for my mother, it's just like, just show me, show me writing, show me poems, show me what she's doing. Uh, for my dad, it's just, yo, let me show you this thing on the guitar. <laughs> and my brother, even though we butt heads, he was, he was, a, I think he's still a big inspiration for my art because it's like, for example, he he introduced me to like albums and like cover arts and so on and so forth. The cover for like Red Fern, he he did that. Nice. So I, I like I like to try and keep it in the family as much as possible, right? That's sick, awesome. And then I read somewhere that you you were a really big Bon Iver fan. Oh yeah, I love Bon Iver. <laughs> I didn't really delved into them at all, but once I saw that, I was like, I was kind of peek, poking around and seeing like what they're about, and like they got really cool stuff. Like their stuff is real deep. Like I found some like some stuff about like their, their like their tour performances and like what they do for tour performances, and it just like blew my mind. It's like they're like on another level. Yeah, their set design is like it's like Kanye level, you know, with the mm -hmm. fucking floating platforms and shit. It's yeah. Sorry, I don't know if I could cuss. <laughs> no, go for it, man. Go for it. Press as much as you want. But yeah, I, I, I could just, like, from watching, like, all your content, you could just, I could just see so many things pulling away from, like, different areas in art, like, in the arts that I was just like, how does he get it all into, like, this one neat little package? But it, it, it's <laughs> kind of, like, here where it all comes from. And uh, that's just going to push us straight into our third question of the five W's, which you've actually kind of referenced, and this is the question I'm probably most excited about and it is where did you first get interested in Taoism? Oh <laughs> where are you getting these? <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. This is like wait, 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 wait. Where did you I feel like I'm what, what's his name? Uh do 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 Nardwire. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Nardwire. It's from Vancouver. How, as well. Where did you even hear about this? <laughs> okay, so Taoism. Yeah, this is actually an interesting story. So when I had graduated high school, I was in. I took a. I took a semester of of CJEP, which is obviously college, yeah. whatever. And towards the ending of my first semester, I ended up dropping out, and I had my buddy. Marcus with me and he, we were kind of in the same boat and he had approached me with this idea of you know we should go tree planting and his sister's boyfriend she met my, his sister went tree planting and met her boyfriend there so he had some connections in the field and he said oh let's go let's go uh, tree planting so honestly I was like look I'm not gonna go to school I want to do music 
um, why not try this? It seems like a good self exploration kind of yeah. ordeal, right? And I could make some money. I was in my in my mind, I was like, I'll make some money and I'll be able to invest it into my studio or buy equipment, whatever. So we went tree planting and we started planting, so on and so forth. It was super fucking hard at the beginning. We actually got separated. And I went, I went to a, a different camp alone, and he stayed at this camp alone. So now it was like, this was kind of my first time being alone in my own environment. And the first day that I went at this new camp, this is like, I'm gonna, this is some like imagery type shit. But I, I went to the camp, yeah. pulled up to it, I set up my tent, and then up on there's like a, a little ridge on the mountain, there was like a hill, a big hill. And it was just like, it looked like a graveyard. Damn. And I walked up, and there was just one single tent perched up on that top of the hill. And for some reason, I was like, I want to know who the fuck is up there, you know? So I walked up, and I just see this guy in one of those, like, camping chairs. And he has, like, a bottle of whiskey and a joint in his hand. And he's reading a book, like, cross-legged. And he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm like, what the fuck? We, we start, you know, just kicking it off, talking, and he starts telling me about what he's reading. Mm -hmm. And it's a book uh, on Alan Watts. And I forget what the book name was, but it was a book with Alan Watts. And from that day on, him and I kind of formed this connection, and he kind of became like a mentor to me. And he had a... He he brought like I'm 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 saying probably forty books with him to yeah. to this like season of planting. So he would always just show me new books and he was kind of teaching me about Taoism. He was studying in philosophy at uh, University of Toronto, which is a super hard program. Mm -hmm. And it was like he was passing me down all this knowledge. We would go to a store, he would tell me like, Oh, buy this book and now I'm just like I'm obsessed. Like, <laughs> yeah. or you know the book uh, Tao Te Ching? Uh, I don't actually really know much about Taoism. I mean, like, like I, I, I looked into it a little bit because, like, I've heard the term around, and I, I did some kind of, like, Googling and like, some research to kind of, like, get a vibe for, like, what it was. And it, it, it it's, I can't relate to, like, actually knowing about it, but it, it feels like a lot of other things, like, kind of, like, spirituality and, like, I don't know, I've been kind of like experimenting in like meditation and minimalism recently in the past few years more so and it kind of feels like I can see a lot of connections kind of drawing between those of just like being super intentional with like everything in life. Yeah, it's, it, it's really about being intentional and also just it's really in the simplest terms about going with the flow of things mm -hmm. and letting go of like your thoughts in a sense. Not saying like just stop thinking but it's about like in meditation, in one of like the most basic practices is just like letting a thought come in, observing it, and letting it leave, you know? Yeah. But I would recommend you and anybody watching this to go get that book, Tao Te Ching. It's actually kind of in a, well, it's like a poetry book. Yeah. Um, that it's formatted, but you read it and you, you will understand the teachings. It's just in a more interesting way. Yeah, that sounds, I mean, because... I, it sounds like a really kind of like interesting way to kind of like learn about like culture and like spirituality because I don't it, it feels different from the little bit that I read on it feels different than other kind of like because it is technically a religion but it feels different than like most religions it feels for some reason. Yeah, it, technically it is a religion, but uh, like this this kind of thinking Taoism and Buddhism and so on and so forth. It's like kind of still foreign to Western society, or yeah. back in the day, it was super foreign. And the 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 writer, the author I was talking about before, uh, Alan Watts, he was like the first philosopher to take Buddhist teaching and Taoist teaching and really solidify it and introduce it into like Western civilization, whatever yeah. um, society. So if you if you want to like learn learn about it from like a Western point of view and you don't have to like learn from maybe a, a monk or something like that, <laughs> read read a book from Alan Watts and you'll it's it's amazing. I understand. I'll definitely check that out. I was like, I, it's always fun to kind of like 
and it's super interesting to hear like the other places that are people are like kind of like pushing and experimenting and trying to like learn new things i feel, i find there's always like great stuff to learn from figure out what other people are trying to learn absolutely yeah i agree awesome well uh uh, I got my answer from where did you learn Taoism? That's it's so. Uh, you still talk to that guy? Yeah, from time to time. I was actually supposed to go visit him uh, uh, this summer. I was gonna go. I was, I was supposed to go to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, COVID, man. Yep. It it did like, but it's okay. <laughs> yep. Can't do nothing about it now, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. We're just going to fly straight into our fourth question of the five that is wrapping this up. And it is, when do you hope to debut your acting career? <laughs> Honestly, I wish I love acting. And, and it sounds like I don't even think that the whatever little small clip in apple pie or whatever was like, it's nothing. It's, it's, nothing. it's so minuscule. But yeah. I did... For for five years in high school, I took drama classes. I loved it. I thought it was super fun. And I, honestly, I would love to do acting because I think it's so fun. It's super interesting. Yeah. So as soon as possible. <laughs> as soon as possible. You're really gunning for that Sad Feet Brothers uh, debut role. The what? The Sad Feet Brothers. What's that? Uh, Joshua and Benjamin Sadfi. I don't even know. Uncut Gems? Uncut Gems, yes! Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, Good reference. 100%. Yeah, I, I... This was, like, when I when I stumbled across this fact that, like, you had an interest in acting, it every, feel like everything kind of just clicked for me, and I was like, this is why I like him. Because, like, I feel like I also have a really large acting and directing background. I acted all through and directed all throughout high school, and I still act and direct to this day. So, like, I feel like whenever I hear music and listen to an artist, like, I, I just have, like, some sort of sense, like, some sort of tickle in the back of my brain that I can tell, like, they're into acting or they have some of that. Because I've had a few people on this show that are also, like, very competent and prolific actors, like Cast is a huge stage and performance actor. Uh, Sam Darko uh, just got a guest star in like a TV show that's really big around here. So like, I just feel like actors and storytellers and like people that like bring performance characters can do so much with music. And like, they really just like, it just feels like nothing else to me. And it's a- For it's, real. Yeah. It, it, I think it opens up a lot of different universes, mm -hmm. especially how you approach music because my my uh, my good friend Sam told me that you know music and especially with hip hop and like doing rap, you're an actor. You're just a voice actor. Yeah. But you're at the same time you need to like embody a role. So you're method acting to like put bring this performance to the best of its capabilities. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. If you, if you're if you're doing a song that's like supposed to be on some Eminem vibes, then you're talking. Murder, you 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 might want to have to put some fake blood on your face before you approach the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because I feel like listening to your stuff, I could hear so many different voices and kind of like character versions of Moses Jones kind of coming in and out through everything. Nothing quite sounded the same. It felt like there was so much kind of like persona and attitude to like every kind of different style you pushed your voice, and it just like it felt like. You really kind of added like this extra extra layer of emotion and like connotation to it all, which was it's really great. You know what I like to call it too is like broken harmony. You know, mm. it's like you, it, harmony is supposed to be like super perfect and super clean, right pitches, but broken harmony, especially with like singing and so on and so forth, and in using those different methods of within your voice, it's like you can create such a different character. Someone like Kendrick is incredible at doing that. You know what I mean? Does he do acting? I, I don't I don't know if I've ever seen him do any like acting performances, but I feel like he might. I don't think he has like officially, but like his music videos, he's so good at it. Yeah. Like I don't know. 
He's, he's got the knack for it, I would say. I would love to see him in like a starring role for like some big film. I feel like that would be incredible. Because like I know like Kid oh, Cudi's big into acting, and who else? Kid Cudi's huge into acting. Oh, I was just gonna name one other. Joey Badass. Movie. Yeah, Joey does it. Oh, Childish Gambino, huge actor. I feel like. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Well, I feel like Kendrick could just slot in with them, like, and just like if like maybe <laughs> would be sick would just get like a movie with like. Those three or four dudes is like the principal four characters. I would think that would be so overwhelmed. I'd be like, who am I supposed to love right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so sick. Tight. Awesome. Well, this has been a great time, chatting, but we're winding down to our fifth and final question of the five W's. And I'm pulling this one straight from uh, Dummy Drip. Just going to quote a line here, and then we'll just try and break it down. And why... Air quote, don't you like to drink? <laughs> okay, this is, this well. This is from someone that also, well, I mean, I don't know if, like, how literal that was, but is this is coming from someone that doesn't drink or, like, abuse substances in, like, his daily life. It's like, you like, you really choose when you're going to do it, but I, I just find it, like, gets in the way of how I, gets in the way of my vibe on the day-to-day -day basis. So that once I heard this, I was kind of like, What's this guy talking about? Is this like, is he thinking the same way I'm thinking? Like, how do you approach it? Okay, well, with with alcohol or drinking, um, I don't hate, hate drinking. I, 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 I mean, I'm kind of like in a weird spot with it. I love, I love the way that it's able to bring you to a different comfort zone. You know what I mean? It can yeah. really let you be loose and like, more expressive i i i don't think i would I, I don't have the same relationship with drinking as i used to you know what i mean mm -hmm. back when i was younger i would just be partying all the time and you know it would just be kind of a necessity where now it's like i like to keep it on like a special occasion I kind of feel like i'm an old man i like to drink just like a nice glass of wine and relax yeah. you know <laughs> where with with substance as well too is um there there's the other line where it's like i don't like to smoke well um i don't and i i i i used to be heavy into smoking and i would smoke a lot of weed i was like a stoner at some point and i ended up having a bad trip randomly yeah. one day that might have been laced with something and i think it's been like four years now I haven't smoked and I, I feel w a lot more clear-headed I felt like it was a distraction even before the bad, bad trip was happening I thought like wow like I I need to stop or else I'm like not going to be able to progress right mm -hmm. and that's not to say that I hate smoking and I feel like there's no benefits to it just for me personally recreational use is like it's it's not a, it's it doesn't help me you know what I mean yeah. it doesn't bring me any benefit but uh, i'll like i don't know i'll have a cbd drink or whatever or uh, smoke a little bit of cbd joint like You're it's harmless just, yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's like that's a healthy way to adopt it as opposed to like just the completely saying no to everything i feel like that would that closes you a lot off from like so much kind of like so much of life not to say drugs and alcohol are like a, a huge part of life but they kind of are for kind of like the younger generation. They're pretty huge. And especially in the music industry, they're like so prolific. And it's, uh, it seems like everyone is so into it, especially just like from my experience, like shooting shows and shooting music videos and everything. It's just like, it's always drugs, alcohol. And it's like, that's just like, it's just like a standard. So it's like interesting to see people kind of like, not, not to say take a stand, not like it needs to be to have someone needs to take a stand against, but someone to just like voice, an opinion that's contrary to the masses. Absolutely. And like you said, it's kind of like become embedded into the culture, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which has its own negative effects on the culture as well, especially with the younger generation and feeling like they have to do the subs, like they have to incorporate substance abuse into their music or into their art to feel like they'd be accepted in that culture, which is mm -hmm. not true at all. Um, but then again, people learn differently, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I'm not, not, not to bash anyone or put down anyone that's ever, like, 
is yeah. that wants to do it. Like if if that's you, hundred percent go for it, do it. You do you. If if your thing is to get wasted as fuck on weekends and that was that's what makes you happy, go for it. Uh, more power to you. I'd love to see it, <laughs> but uh, uh, not not for me. But uh, yeah, tight. Awesome. Well, uh, it has been a great time sitting down and chatting with you, Moses Jones. Uh, do you have anything else you want to kind of like say or put it out to the audience before I kind of wrap this up into a, a nice outro for us? Uh, keep an eye out for my project. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. I will, I will. I mean, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out because I guess you haven't dropped your debut project yet. No, uh, it's going to be a body of work. I don't know if it's going to be a debut album or an EP or whatever. It's just going to be something. It's going to be something? Is there any, like, rough timeline we should keep our eyes on for that or kind of just... It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for sitting down with us today. Moses Jones, you guys have to check his stuff out. Uh, it sounds like the next wave. This guy's got articles in Lyrical Lemonade and tons of other like publishing magazines they recognize this guy when no one else really is like his his viewer his listeners are like way down but his recognition is like way up there from people that really know what the fuck is up so better get on this guy's shit before he blows up so you can show off to all your friends be like i knew this cool guy he was just from the come up awesome cool well this guy's been straight out of montreal we got moses jones for the five w's end of show my name has been reese sitter and i will see you in the next one have a great day Take care, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you.